Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yep, welcome. Thank you very much, and I can see the audience now for the first time on online. We can see the back of your head. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's good to turn around. Uh, I joined you at 5.30 this morning along with many other people here on the West Coast who are very interested in the topic of today. Um, I was in my jammies and had my coffee and then when you took a break I was showering and then when you were on lunch I was racing into the office so I could get into here to talk to you. So it's been an outstanding conference and thank you for including me. I want to go back for just a minute to uh, something that Jennifer Ho said earlier, that her parents were so proud that she was presenting before this uh, group. Um, I'm, I'm sure my parents are pleased too, but they still ask me why I left clinical medicine. Uh, they want to know why I went through all of that training and worked as a clinician in a, very, a pretty lucrative practice, academic medicine practice, for almost 20 years to go into uh, public health policy. And I think my parents are really smart, but th they don't get this. They don't, they're getting it because I'm pounding it into them. But most people do not understand. Uh, they don't, they, they think that health is determined by the ability to access high quality health care. Um, and there is an entire business model to support that belief system. So uh, while access to care certainly is important, um, we do need to create a whole different sociocultural model uh, about describing health. And that, I think that's been a, a, a recurrent um, theme throughout today's presentation. Um, Captain Ellenberg said that health is the best defense, and I would, I would argue that health is the best offense, too. That uh, health leads to a thriving population um, with the ability for creative research and development, uh, to expand our economy, expand our tax base. Um, it creates opportunities for uh, global uh, integration, expanding our markets and our spheres of influence throughout the world. Uh, and if we are able to have not only health but equity in health, we demonstrate that democracy is alive and well. And so I think that these are all really critical issues that we uh, are facing as we move forward. So if we'll go to um, slide number two, where it says acknowledgments, and uh, I need your help to doing that. And I'll just, I, did, I can't see the slides, so I'm going to assume that you're looking at the same thing that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, Linda mentioned the Strategic Growth Council. Um, I do want to acknowledge that it was that legislating that organization, that putting that into, um, a, a codifying it, that at the governor's level, at the executive level, that really gave us the imprimatur that we needed to do this work. Um, the California Department of Health houses and supports and tries to create these bridges and these networks of communication, and we have the staff here for it, but um, we're, uh, uh, we're trying not to be the driver of it. We're trying to create the bridges. The California Health and All Policies Task Force team is essential. What I have found since joining this group is that we're attracting people in government who see the possibility of this, who perceive that there is value added to their organizations when they know that their decisions and the work that they do contribute to greater health in the population that they serve. So they, we're, we have really outstanding leaders on that task force who are always thinking in really kind of new, creative ways and taking risks that we really, really appreciate and need. And I also want to acknowledge the Public Health Institute. Uh, th this private-public partnership has been essential and a startup organization. And we found that actually it gives us a great maneuverability and flexibility. Um, we need our external stakeholders. We need our private partners in order to be successful. So I hope that this is not just a startup but an ongoing um, uh, effort. And the funding of the California Endowment, the American Public Health Association, Kaiser Community Benefits, and the Community Transformation Grants all allow us to do this work. The next slide, please. I mentioned um, that, the, uh, that the SGC started through legislation, but actually the high up task force was created through an executive order under uh, Governor Schwarzenegger in, in 2010. 
Um, subsequently, in 2012, there was a Senate concurrent resolution that was created that established the value of the health and all policies. And as you know, in government, these things, these are steps, these are building blocks to building something that you need so that you can reference back to them that this is not just a programmatic effort that we're creating um, out on the margin. Um, this is something that has some foundation, it has some experience, it has some modeling for it. And, and then we have also the will of the people that are involved in it through these legislative and executive orders. The next step was that uh, just last year, it was code of the Health and All Policies Task Force was mentioned in statute in the Health and Safety Codes of California as part of our brand new Office of Health Equity, which is a terrific uh, home for it. Um, in that st those statutes, it specifically mentions that the all the efforts of the Office of Health Equity and our advisory committee are to be uh, very uh, tightly connected to the work of the Health and All Policies Task Force and that there's strong bi-directionality in the way that we inform one another and assist one another to move forward on, the, on this larger endeavor of not only health equity but also sustainability like Linda mentioned because our climate change and health work is also located in the Office of Health Equity. Uh, next step, please. next slide please. Uh, here's a whole, um, you, can, you should be looking at the range of people involved in our 19 member uh, task force. And one of the challenges that we have is you have to uh, not only attract people who are willing to be creative and willing to be transparent and to, to take some risks, but we always strive to get the highest level of decision making and unfortunately sometimes those don't match. <laughs> Uh, so then you have to always find, well, you know, we want, we want to keep informing at the highest level, we want to be inclusive, we want to reach out with them. So um, we make an effort um, every uh, year in the summer, we do individual visits. We not only have our quarterly task force meetings and then our work groups in between, um, but myself and my staff will go to uh, each agency and we will uh, have uh, pro longer discussions with them. Uh, what are your priorities? What are your shifting priorities? What are the barriers that you're facing? What are some things that you hope to achieve that you think maybe the task force can help you? Where can we elevate some of the issues or some of the achievements that you've had for, so it gets greater public attention? And I'll tell you one of the things that I say in every one of these meetings that I think you can actually physically watch the person change in their attitude is that the Health and All Policies Task Force and the work that we do, we will never ask you to do something that you don't want to do. And they immediately relax because they're always afraid that another person is coming to them and asking them for one more thing to do for which they don't have adequate resources to achieve it um, at, at a level of excellence for which they strive. Um, and, and so being open to what does that mean then? Because if, if you're really truly receptive to other people's uh, issues and their shifting environments and their shifting priorities, um, that, that means then that we have to be able to shift too. Uh, we're facing that right now. We started off with, a, uh, with uh, several implementation plans that we're now, we, we look at them, we've made achievements, we've gone forward on them, but in these discussions of changing resources or changing political environments, what is the new opportunity? What is the new place that we can go? How can we this now incorporate this in so that we continue to march forward and make progress? Next slide, please. I mentioned this before that we think of bridge not as the we think of health not as the bridge but as the driver for the process. So again, negotiation among competing interests is a constant in our work, and our health team nurtures this collaboration. They're always reassessing policy priorities. They're regularly defining and promoting co-benefits. They're consulting, they're seeking advice and consent. There's routine communications. And then we're encouraging the leadership and the recognition of our partner agencies. Next, please. We interact with local governments, with regional efforts and NGOs. And this is one way that right now we're working with the Public Health, Interest, Health, Public Health Institute. That is a, a strong um, endeavor on their part the Community Transformation Grants, the California for Health Initiatives, and our Metropolitan Planning Organizations are all ways uh, where we can check, we can see, are the policy changes that we're doing at the state level, the dialogues that we're having, the guidance that we're creating, how is this trickling down, and how is this being helpful 
to these uh, local organizations because all planning is local, then what, is, what are they then able to do? And we hear this all the time that we're, cr we're creating a pathway for them and a cultural environment for them to do the work that they're striving to do. Next, please. I just thought you should hear just a, just a tiny bit. It's, this is, should be the structure and governance slide that you're looking at. We regularly report to the Strategic Growth Council. They're our accountability organization. And, and by doing that, because it's a, a, there are, it's a public meeting and a public forum, it's a way for us to release our, our documents or release our implementation plans to get public input and public, public commentary on a regular basis. Um, I already mentioned that we're in the Office of Health Equity. Uh, uh, we promote bi-directional communication between the Office of Health Equity and the task force. We have a simple charter that defines our operations. And I told you that we meet quarterly uh, and, and then have smaller meetings in between. Next, please. Funding is always a, a challenge. Uh, we've been very creative in that. The SGC itself, the Strategic Growth Council, gets an allocation of funding from the Air Resources Board for their support of HIAP. The Department of Health provides two FTEs, an office space and equipment and supplies for the staff uh, that support the task force. And PHI, through their funding uh, with the California Endowment and Kaiser and the Community Transformation Grants, provides another 5.0 FTE. So those seven FTE constitutes our backbone staff. And because of the growth and the interest in this, it's, it's not sufficient, just so that you know that this is a very stressed group of people. Next slide. The California HIAP Task Force and Program Processes. We started off gathering information from the people that we hope to serve. We traveled around the state with a series of workshops. We collected over 1,200 initial recommendations. These were then reduced to 34 priority recommendations. They could be combined. They were modified slightly. That was an intensive process. This yielded eight implementation plans, and you can see where they fall. And these implementation plans were then presented to the Strategic Growth Council for approval. These become a guiding document, but they're not a scope of work. Um, they uh, give us a direction that seems like here's the opportunities. Let's, let's, let's make some progress, so let's learn from these. What happens, though, that's really interesting is that when you start, when you think that this is what you want to do and where you want to target, when you start to have these trusting dialogues, we're finding that every agency will start to disclose barriers that they're facing. Oftentimes, we then have to spend some time addressing those barriers, getting the right people in the room, getting some additional information. Um, trying to uh, bring the resources to bear or the information or convening people as necessary so that we can address that barrier and then move back to the original uh, goal. Uh, that happens more than we ever realized would be there because, and I think it's because people are no longer being as protective about the, the, the things that are holding their back and realizing that if we can address those, we can move forward. Next, please. So some of our major achievements, um, we have uh, been, the HIAP Task Force has created a new uh, interagency farm to fork office. Um, you've been hearing about that through the day with uh, lots of opportunity for, uh, in, in thinking about land use and agriculture, preservation of agricultural spaces and uh, food hubs and getting more local fresh produce um, available, more readily available to communities. Um, we have a food procurement interagency work group um, that is right now, one of their priorities is to establish some nutritional guidelines for the state um, so then they can use those guidelines to leverage um, healthier food procurement contracts, um, both in uh, state agencies and through the Department of Corrections. So that's a very exciting opportunity. Um, our state general plan guidance has not been updated since 2003. Our Office of Planning and Research is on the task force. Because of this whole uh, interest in uh, using a health lens to look at policy, the Office of Planning and Research has made a very strong commitment to embed health and health impact and health considerations into our state's general plan guidance. 
Um, they have hired expertise. They have convened work groups throughout the state. They have solicited and are the, the input of our local public health officers. They have had individual interviews with our local pu public health officers. Um, we have been uh, training and providing education to local public health officers about how land planning and state guidance documents is, uh, is germane to their work as health officers. We think this is going to be a terrific partnership. These guidance will be publicly released uh, later this fall, and uh, we're very excited about this partnership. We've been working to uh, align school facility and city planning processes, which they often aren't. Again, not so much about building new schools, but by uh, rejuvenating, uh, er rejuvenating schools that maybe have been neglected and trying to see how schools and joint use agreements and these can become places um, can more of the heart of the community that people can walk to safely, um, go to school during the day, and then um, have um, events in the evening or on weekends that also contribute to the, to the health of that community. We have other guidance documents near completion, crime prevention through environmental design, housing siting near major thoroughfares, nutrition guidelines for our state agencies. So these are some of the things that actually we just, the, the last implementation plan was approved last spring. Uh, but these have been accomplishments that we've been able to do. And two of our eight implement implementation plans are in near completion in just a short time. So there's a, been a lot of enthusiasm. Next slide is, this is my last slide, and that's talking about the challenges ahead. And I really, um, I really need uh, the help of the people in this room. Um, balancing implementation of our current plans with new ideas and projects is a challenge. And that requires us being nimble. Um, but not uh, uh, being able to shift and be nimble in doing that, but also being accountable for the, some of the goals that we set out. Uh, continuing to foster ongoing communication across multiple sectors, um, it requires a special skill set amongst our staff and requires a lot of time and thoughtfulness, courting alignment between multiple efforts so that we have synergy, uh, providing technical assistance in response to a growing interest from other agencies as we are successful, as the word gets out that this is an approach that can be very helpful. Uh, we are only getting more and more requests throughout California for assistance at the local level. Um, I want to talk just a moment about demonstrating value. And I, I lied, I have one last slide, <laughs> because Linda asked me if I could just talk a little bit more about that. When you do pol when we're talking about an approach and we're doing policy change, so we have to deal with these time lags, and you know what I'm, I'm talking about, these time lags from, poly from policy design through decision making and implementation, and that we're dealing with these complex adaptive systems. They're nonlinear, they're dynamic, they're co-evolutionary, they're uncertain. And that this is not a model that we can test in one place and not have somewhere else because it's, it's really about a, an approach. Uh, an approach to being nimble and thinking and looking at opportunity and walking through doors where they're open to you and then avoiding doors that get closed and then maybe coming back to them later on. We are really working right now to come up with evaluation strategies and um, we, we're looking at developmental evaluation to measure the processes of change, outcome mapping, strategy mapping, and strat using strategy journals here. Um, and then the long-term, Linda told you about our healthy community indicators as a way where we can, we can measure ultimate health impact within a neighborhood, but in terms of measuring high up, we really need to be measuring something that's always changing. Uh, and so that's the challenge that we face. Uh, that's my last slide. Uh, thank you very much. You'll see that uh, there's contact information on the last slide if you, if you need it. But thank you for letting me address you. Thank you, Connie. <laughs>